Hello everybody and Morning. welcome back to Let's Go Live. It is episode 29. It's the start of Oceans Week. Woohoo! I'm Maddie. I'm Greg and all together now we, we are, are live. live. Yes you... we are. It was touch and go for a little bit. Cup of tech We issues. are here. here we are. You can join us weekday mornings at 11am normally uh, <laughs> here in our spare room. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, You know now this is a show f uh, packed with fun and facts. Uh, of course we're going to have quiz dances have. and awkward selfies uh, and lots of activities two really fun activities for you today we've missed you lot i yeah. hope you've had a lovely lovely week we've uh, we've had a week away from uh, let's go live um if you are in the live chat right now hi lovely to have you give us a thumbs um, up hope you had a lovely week um, and if you're watching back later uh thanks so much for joining us when you can uh, who is in the live chat who is in the live chat? Who have we got? We have got Matthew in Flitwick. Bethany says hi. Hi, Bethany. Uh, we've got Reese and Xantha in Whitstable. Bray in Hampshire. Hello, Bray. Uh, we've got Gregory, great name, in Nesborough. <laughs> um, James is watching and he loves puffer fish. Ooh. So do I. We've got Jocelyn in Cumbria. <laughs> Who else? We've got um, Jess and Luke. Apparently they watch Let's Go Live all the time. Ben and Sam in Westgate on Sea. And Hugo in France. Bonjour. 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 Um, so, like... I guess this is... Go for it. <laughs> I was going to say, if you're watching back, hello to everyone as well watching back. You might be a little bit on edge today. We can work. Just a, just a yeah. little bit. Um, no time for rehearsal. So um, we're back from the week off. Uh, it's been fantastic to see that so many of you have been watching the themed weeks back, specific episodes back, doing all sorts of amazing weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've been sending them to us on uh, Twitter and Instagram. You've been emailing them to our yeah. to our inbox. Thank you. We have seen so, so many bird feeders inspired by Garden Week. Yeah. Uh, lots of digestive daves uh, and blood and poo makes following on from Bodies Week. That does make sense if you've watched it. <laughs> um, and we've also, what else have we seen? A whole fleet of paddle boats. We have seen since Maker Week. We've seen lots and lots of fizzy rockets yes. launched, courtesy of Space Week. Yeah. Uh, we've got Digestive Daves. Yeah. Uh, so Bodies many of Week. them from Bodies Week. We've got erupting volcanoes aplenty yeah. from uh, Project Earth Week. Fossils from Dino Week. Absolutely everything. Uh, we do have a couple of these photos, but we will show you them at the end of the show because we do want to get cracking with our new theme. Yes, we do. <laughs> Which is oceans um it's a very much requested theme as well and it's something that we're just as excited about as you are we hope just to say um the tech issue was that the software has been updated and we and we can't use our normal cameras so we've managed to bodge something together it's using my phone which is why you keep getting a yellow box over our face <laughs> like that focusing on us don't know what i can do about that so we're going to live with it for today <laughs> at least we've got a camera <laughs> And you wait till you see our props. All right, go for it, man. Back to oceans. It's done. Okay. okay. We should have just used it. The thing is, if we had used the other camera, then there was risk of the computer. If we'd used the other camera, we had to use the other laptop, which I think oh. would have just crashed because this is an ambitious show today. Anyway, carry on. Here we go. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Talk to us about oceans. This is so funny. Okay. Why have you got a globe there, Maddie? Well, okay. All right, then. <laughs> so, oceans is a huge topic, and I mean huge. <laughs> um, like, we just look at the globe here. Like, did you know that actually more of the Earth is covered in water than it is land? <laughs> we should we shouldn't really call it Earth. We should call it water. No, we should call planet. it the, well. We do. We often call it the blue planet because over. 70% of our earth is covered in water, which is so incredible. That water can be fresh water, which yep. is what we get in rivers and lakes and frozen into glaciers and up in the poles so as well, the polar we'll, ice caps. We'll be touching on fresh water this week. Yeah, uh, but we're mainly going to be focusing on seawater, seawater, yes. salt water, uh, which you get in your seas and your oceans. So they're going to be the focus of our watery adventure. The yeah. plan for this week. Should we take them through the plan for this week? Yes, please, let's. <laughs> Okay, so uh, starting with today, we are going to be getting our toes sandy as we go for a week along, uh, a walk along the seashore. <laughs> <laughs> um, then tomorrow, we are going to go into the, uh, into the shallows. We're going to go for a dip in the water. We're going to explore the shallows, 
coral reefs and kelp forests. That's going to be amazing. On Wednesday, we're going to be thinking about marine life in the open ocean. Everything from microscopic algae to the swimming giants. Then on Thursday, we're going to pause our descent to consider our human impact on the ocean in a special episode with some really expert guests. And then on Friday, we're going to be diving down in the dark depths and we'll be searching for the alien life that lives in the deepest places on Earth. So let's start our ocean quest. Mm -hmm. We're going to head first to the coast. Yes, where the land meets the sea. So Greg and everybody watching, when you think of coasts, what do you picture? I picture long stretches of beach. Yeah. Uh, they could be pebbles. Pebbles are great because they kind of, you get that amazing noise as you walk through like them. Clickety clackety sounds. Yeah. yeah, or they could be sand, sandy beaches, yeah. um, which makes great sandcastles. Of course. Got to get yourself a little ice cream treat. Yeah, some hot yeah. chips maybe. Looking out to sea. I'm going to play you. Oh, okay. I was going to say, what sort of sounds might you hear if you were on a coast or on a beach? Okay, what sort of sounds? These are my favourite sounds. Okay. Into waves, waves crashing as the as the water comes in and out of the beach. Yeah, oh, it is love it! A very relaxing sound. But actually, if you ever have sat and just watched a beach, as well as the waves crashing and that water lapping in and out, you might have noticed that the water sometimes seems to creep its way up the beach, or other times it might sort of look as if it's shying further away from you. And we've actually got a video which shows us this movement of water really well. Right, so this is a beach down in the southwest of England. It's Fistral Beach in Newquay. And so this video has been sped up. All this normally happens quite slowly. But can you see the water is gradually moving up the beach? We call this slow in and out movement of water the tide. The tide, yeah. So um, tides actually take place in all bodies of water, uh, mm. but they're much easier to see on beaches or in bays. So what we just saw was the tide coming in when the water reaches its highest level, and we call this high tide. So if that's what high tide looks like, what does low tide look like? Here's a video. Glad you asked. <laughs> So we're now looking at a beach in Panama City, and again, the video has been sped up. Uh, this time, the water level is falling, so the tide is going out. And when the water is at the lowest level, we call it a low tide. And there are usually two high and two low tides every single day. So the sea comes in and out, then in and out again. Okay, what creates the tides? Ooh, interesting. So uh, let me flip to this camera. So, so why is it, why do we get movement of water like this? So we have got the earth and the moon, and it's basically down to the moon. So the moon goes round the earth like this, right? So we say the moon orbits the earth um, and the earth is also rotating, right? But actually, why doesn't the moon go shooting off into space? It's because the gravity from earth is pulling it down into that orbit. And what it actually also does is it pulls back again. So the moon is pulling all the water on the planet towards it. And that creates what we call a tidal bulge. So it pulls that water out towards the moon. And that means that on any beach that's on this side, more water is pulled onto that beach and the tide comes in. You get a high tide. But then what happens is we're always rotating on planet Earth. Yeah. So you actually rotate away from that tidal bulge and the tide drops, right? The mm -hmm. tide goes out. But Maddie said, right? And at the same time, the next beach that's over here turns back into that tidal yeah. bulge. But Maddie said that you get it twice a day, right? Twice a day, you get your high tide and your low tide. So mm -hmm. how does that happen? That happens because actually you also get a tidal bulge on the other side of uh, planet Earth. Now that comes from that comes from the fact <laughs> that comes from the fact that actually we're not just sitting there completely still as we rotate with the moon around us. We're actually doing this kind of weird dance. We are slightly moving around as well, and that creates the second bulge. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go into that loads, but there's a video uh, link in the video description below of a, of a bite-sized video that you can watch all about the creation of that second tidal bulge. It's super neat. I love it. Yeah. So there you go. That's sort of like a quick explanation as to why we have tides, but we actually have the tides to thank for having beaches in the first place because it was the tide coming in and out over 
millions and thousands of years that broke down the rocks on the coastline uh, down into smaller and smaller and smaller and piece it pieces mm. washing them away bringing new tiny pieces back up and that has created our beaches but thanks tides cheers tides <laughs> um but as well as making the beach it is the tide that actually makes the seashore one of the most challenging places to live on earth yeah so i was really surprised about this because i think about the beach mm -hmm. and you know the the lovely waves as a relaxing place as a calming place but yeah it's one of the most challenging places for life to live because if you think about it um all of that moving water means that the seashore as a habitat is always changing and mm. the wildlife that decides to make it home has to adapt because sometimes it might be covered in water and other times it's not. The perfect example of where this happens is a rock pool. Have you ever been rock pooling? Right? I, have, I love rock pooling. Rock pooling. Me too. Um, have a look at this video. This is another time lapse. So this on, is Maddie. a sped up video. So this has been taken over a long period of time and then been made faster. Mm. So when the tide goes out on a rocky seashore, pools of water are left behind. These rock pools or tide pools are mini habitats and they're home to a huge range of plants and animals, but as we said, they are dangerous places to live. So why are they hard places to live? Well, firstly, with the water going out and coming in, it's a good idea to find a way to stick to the rock so you don't get washed away. Yeah, and it can get pretty crowded in there too. So things get competitive. You want to make sure that if you're living in a rock pool, that you're, you've got the best spot to get the food. And the water itself mm -hmm. is a bit of a challenge because thanks to the heat from the sun evaporating some of the water away, it's warmer and saltier than normal seawater. Ah, so... I wonder, though, if any of this lot happen to know of any rock pool creatures. What do you think? Hang on. Hang on. I can... I, I can... Ooh. Ooh. I can feel I... a quiz coming on. Hello, if you are new to Let's Go Live, welcome and join us in the quiz dance. The worse dancing, the better. You've got to swim. Swim, swim, swim. And done. Oh my goodness, that was so well... <laughs> We haven't even practiced any of this. <laughs> okay, all right. All right then. Enough of that. Ooh. Enough of that. Um, for this quiz, everybody, we and you, you and I, are going to be rock pool explorers. Oh yeah, and yes. to play it, we've only gone and made our own rock pool. Not Bear only with. have we made our own rock pool, we've also made something else we're calling an aquascope. Okay, all right, let's set up for this again. All right, then, we haven't same. really planned this, have we? It's great, don't worry. I'm so proud of this. Here you go, everyone. Good job, you're strong. All right, so first we're going to talk you through um, how to make a rock pool. Then we're going to introduce you to our aquascope. Now, this is the aquascope here, so I'll bring that into position. All right. So, um... Some of you possibly actually live near beaches and you might have rock pools uh, quite close to your homes. If you do, that's awesome. Uh, just a reminder, though, that if you do go rock pooling, it is always best to go with a grown up because they can be dangerous environments. However, if like us, you don't live near a beach, then you can always make your own rock pool like we have. Now, to make your own rock pool at home, you could use uh, a mixing bowl or a washing up bowl or even just a little shallow tray. Yeah. Yeah, that would work really, really well. But as usual, we like to make things a bit bigger here in our spare room studio so that you can see it. So this is our version of our rock pool. So in our container, we've just got some lots of different rocks and pebbles that we picked up from the garden, put some sand at the bottom and filled it with water. But on some of the rocks, it is a rock pool, I have painted rock pool creatures. And our game today is to try and find them in the rock pool. But how are we going to do that, Greg? To do that, we are going to use an aquascope, right? A thing to let you look in the aqua, in the water. This is the aquascope. Uh, I'm going to show them on this camera yeah, how to it. make it. So to make your own aquascope, all you need is any sort of pot, right? If it's a see-through pot, brilliant. You've mm. already nailed that one. If not, cut the bottom carefully off the pot and then put a piece of uh, see-through plastic on the bottom. So what did you use? 
We decided that cling film was too weak, right? Yeah, I just used a a section of a freezer bag, just like a sealable bag. Nice. So what we've done is we've put our uh, webcam, table cam, uh, in this so you can actually see what's happening inside the aquascope. You're going on an underwater journey. Yes. But after all, thank you so much, this is a quiz. So we thought that we could give you some... Oh, I'm going to sit down here. We thought we could give you some clues... um, uh, some clues uh, for different creatures you would find in a rock pool. And once you've guessed them, we will go and see if we can find it in the rock pool. Okay? Are we all ready to go rock pooling? Yeah! Are we ready for our rock pool adventure? I am, absolutely. Um, do we not have to get ready for our rock pooling? Oh, well. I, Hang on. Yeah, okay. I mean, sun. It's worth saying I've if you do my, go rock pooling. Got my net. There Lost my cap. All right, good. This is what we should have put on when we started doing the rock pool game. Oh, we'll keep that for the selfie. Oh, yes. nice. All right. Well, keep well I'll keep my sun hat on because you've got to be careful when you go to the beach. Right. So we are going to show you. Here are five animals. Hang on. Boom. Five things that you could find. That's a bit faded out. Yeah. Five uh, creatures that you could find in the rock pool. We are going to give you a clue. You need yep. to work out which one it is. And then Maddie is going to go and see if she can find them. All right, then. So here are your clues for your rock pool animal number one. Okay, the first clue is the underside of this animal's body acts like a sucker holding it onto the rock, but they can move if they need to. So that's clue number one. one. Anyone got it from clue number one? If you're watching live, Mm. chuck it in the live chat. It could be a number of those things, actually. Mm. Uh, How about this one? When the tide is out, they retract their tentacles, meaning they bring them back in uh, and it just leaves what looks like a blob of jelly. So what do you think it is? Which of those creatures? Let us know in the live chat if you're with us live. I think that that is the anemone, which is this one. Yes, that is actually a beadlet anemone. So that's what it looks like in uh, in real life. But now, of course, we've got to go rock pooling. OK, goodness. All right. Hang on. How are we going to do this? Uh, I am going to switch to the aquascope. Here it is, everyone. All right. Uh, so Can you through. find... Oh. Now, does that, that doesn't, mm, what does that look like in an enemy to you? And if I look, you get the whole feed from my phone. <laughs> what about this? Is that an enemy? No. no. Let me know. Is this an enemy? No. What about that yeah. one? Okay, I'm going to take it out, actually, so we can all see it. There it is. Oh, amazing. Great. Let's show them back here. Okay, put that so down we there. have successfully found the anemone in the rock pool. Do you want to put it on this camera? Yeah. There you go. It's a bit wet. There you go. Well Great done, everyone. Job. Good nice one. Nice work. All right. So that is the anemone done. Let me take the anemone off here. Okay. Next Next clues. Next clues. I'll do the next one. Uh, despite its name, it is not a fish. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, they feed on mollusks and mussels and coral and plankton. This is how they feed, right? They take their stomach and they push their stomach out of their mouth... <laughs> And they wrap it around the food and then they re-swallow the food and their stomach. Mm, that's <laughs> so cool. Mm. Uh, final clue. If you haven't got it yet, hopefully this will help. They can regrow an arm if they lose one. Because sometimes if they're attacked by a predator, they deliberately shed, they drop an arm mm-hmm. and then can regrow it again afterwards. What is it? Adaptation for life in the ocean. It is the starfish. Oh, I saw wait, some... Oh, so, oh, oh, oh. oh. In fact... Evan has already got that one right. Well done, Evan. So I think we saw that one last time we went we went rock pooling. Yeah, so there's Let's a normal look. picture of a starfish. Let's go back to the aquascope. Okay. Let's see no. if we can find it. Tell me when you think you can see it. Oh, not Well that. done to, uh, yeah, Max, Ariana, Martin, James, Manuel, Sam, Daniel, Matt, Bella. No. Oh, no, I saw a little face. Hey! There it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, there we go. Good I've got job. it. Good job. All right. Nice. Nice work. Nice one. All right. Let's get rid of the starfish. So, third one. Here we go. Uh, first clue for the third one. Mm. Shall I go for this one? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, how about this? It um, When the water comes in and it covers them, they'll crawl around looking for stuff to eat. So that might be seaweed or algae. And they eat it by scraping the rock with something that's a bit like a tooth. Okay. Okay. Clue number two. Their shells are rounded and pointed, a bit like a wizard's hat. And this protects them from being eaten. 
And then three, when the water goes out, they clamp down and stick to the rocks so that their bodies stay nice and damp inside. Uh, but they, and they don't dry out. What do you think it is? It is... I wonder if you know the name of it. I think it's this shell rocky thing. It is. On this side. Hang on, is that a limp? Limpet. Limpet. It's a limpet. It's a yeah. limpet. Not, it's just a limpet. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, well done. Let me show you a picture, number you... three picture reveal. There you go, that's what it normally looks like. A couple of limpets. Uh, did anyone get that in the live chat? Uh, we had a few guesses of crab. Ooh. Oh, limpet. Debbie said limpet. Well done, Debbie. Um, yeah, we had a few crab guesses. Oh, hang on, you're in there with the aquascope. I am, I'm looking. I'm looking. We've it actually is. seen this one a few times already. It was... James says limpet. There, you got it? Oh, there it is. There it there is. There it is. Okay, let me grab it out. It's actually covered in a bit of sand. Oh, I can show you. Karen says limpet. Under the water. Let's go back to this one. <laughs> um, I thought crab as well. Lots of people thought crab initially when you were explaining oh, oh, it. Oh, because of the shell. Because probably. of the shell, and it goes yeah. in and comes out. So uh, I was with you, like I was with you, like. All mm -hmm. right, let's get rid of the limpet then. All right, you could you do the next one. Should I do the next one? Yes. Okay, so the last one then. Uh, it has distinctive. Two more. Two more. Oh, okay. Oh, it has. Am I doing this one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It has distinctive frilly tentacles on the top of its head. <laughs> and that's why it's sometimes called the fish with antlers. Hey. Uh, they have sharp teeth. They feed on animals on the seabed like sea anemones. And their eyes, you can see their eyes are close to the top of their heads. So they can spot predators like seabirds that might be flying overhead. Yeah. Brilliant evolution, that. This is that fish. But Which I believe what? is called a blenny. Yes! <laughs> Blennies are really funny looking things. You'll actually often see them out of the water on the rocks, actually. Look at them. Cool looking animals. And we have seen the blenny a couple of times. So let's go let's rock get pooling. Straight in. Here let's we go. Is. Straight for the blenny. Loads there of people. There it is. A yeah. blenny. I'm going to take it out of the water and I'll show it to you down here. Great. Great little paintings, those, man. Lovely. Thanks. You, you know, you could, you, if you did this at home, you could use little plastic animals you might have but you know why not get creative and make your own that's what we thought wasn't it yeah all Love right it. then last um, one last one you're never gonna guess you're what never this gonna one guess is. which this one is there are so many to choose from oh but we'll tell you a couple of facts about yeah. this anyway um so this animal their two front legs have claws which they use to walk um, and they have two pairs of antennae one for feeling their way around and the other is for smelling and tasting and then the last clue is they live in empty sea uh, sea snail shells mm. because they need a, a shell to shelter in and protect their soft bodies. So the answer is... Indeed, a hermit crab. Yeah. I just say well done to everyone who was saying, oh, that's a blenny. Like they blenny. knew it was a blenny. It wasn't just that's the fish. Loads of people, well done, who said fish. But loads of people were like, yeah, it's the blenny. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Right. So yes, hermit crab. Well done to everyone who's saying hermit crab. Here's a picture of a hermit crab. I find them very sweet. They All are. Right, here we go. Aquascope. Right, Let's find the final it. one. Finding it. It is. Up there. Oh, oh, there it is. Whee. Hang on, it's also covered in a little bit of sand. Ah. Nice work. That's my favourite one. That rid one. Of the hermit crab. Um, have you ever seen a hermit crab without its shell? It's weird. This is not a joke. Uh, go and Google it later. Have a look. See if yeah. you can find a good photo of it later. And as hermit crabs get bigger, they have to move house and find bigger shells. I'm going to show you, show you oh, mine. There you go. I was going to show you. There you go. There's Great. the hermit crab. You didn't see that one too well. Love it. Awesome. Um, we're going to put a link in the video description below to uh, a great game from the Marine Conservation Society uh, where you get to kind of prepare to go rock pooling in this in this animated game. And the characters look like us. They do a little weirdly. bit. Weirdly. Um, so we love that. Oh, you just put that away. We need the selfie. Oh, my goodness me. We need the selfie. What a plonker. People are saying selfie time. And you're a, so right. What a blenny I am. <laughs> what a blenny. <laughs> All right. OK, so I'm going to get this ready. This ready. I was too keen. Okay, anyone who's new to Let's Go Live, I can see we've got about five and a half thousand devices watching live. What a time to join us. What eh? a time to join us. Um, put someone in front of the screen and get ready to take a photo of them or take a selfie yourself. Uh, it goes like this. I guess I should take my sunnies off because it's a bit impersonal, isn't it? Okay, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. It's the awkward selfie. Every time we do this, it sounds more and more like a Christmas song. It's really bizarre. If anyone managed to get the picture whilst we had the yellow focusing things from my iPhone, oh, uh, that would be really good. I'd love to see that. Okay, right, Mads. Uh, the good news is we've got time to do this last chunk. 
Oh, um, so uh, both chunks actually I think we can squeeze them in for you okay awesome so we want to show you um one more like little make activity uh, mm -hmm. but before we do that rock pools are mm -hmm. not the only habitat for wildlife along the seashore no the seashore is a habitat for loads of different animals including worms yes yeah Think about this, worms on the beach? What are you talking about? Um, have you ever been to a beach and seen lots of sort of little wiggly piles of sand? They look like this. Yeah, sometimes the beach is absolutely covered in thousands of them. Well, this is actually worm cast. Yep, that is, a, that is sand that has been eaten and passed through the body of a lugworm. And here's, here is a lugworm. We don't actually often see them because they live in burrows that they make under the sand that are U-shaped like this. So there you go. That is a lugworm. Uh, what about seabirds, mm. right, living up on the cliff? So this is my favourite. This is a puffin. Yeah. yeah. So they spend most of their lives out at sea, but then they return to the same cliff top on the coast once a year to breed. Uh, and they rear a single chick, a black, fluffy puffling, oh. they're called. Uh, and they'll take it in turns to go out and fish. There you go. I think puffling might be one of my new favourite words, actually, in fact. Can anyone hear a lawnmower? I think that's a plane. Was that a plane? We are in our spare room. Yeah, um, that's what it's going to happen. Okay, and then what about sea turtles oh, yes they also use beaches actually um, and they use them for nesting so most female sea turtles will return to the same beach that they were born on wow. um, every time they're ready to nest and they will travel thousands of miles from their feeding grounds to get to their nesting sites where they'll dig holes in the ground and that's where they will lay their eggs and cover them with sand and when those uh turtles hatch out of the eggs the little hatchlings then have to make the dangerous journey from their uh well, from, from the nesting the site nesting, the nests under the sand to the water we were so fortunate mm. and lucky uh to actually get to snorkel with some sea turtles yeah. and see some little ones in um uh, in that protected place What's yeah the name little, of it? little sanctuary that's it sanctuary and mm -hmm. um, there's a video we'll, we'll link to it below a video on the channel of um of that experience oh it was amazing it was so lovely but not all seashores are rocky well they're not all beachy are they no. i think is the point and they're definitely no. not all warm no sadly they are not all warm no mm. uh we have of course the frozen coast yeah so let me show you a video of this what sort of animals might you find on the frozen coast Hang These are emperor penguins, yeah. the largest penguin species. They have uh, adapted well to live along the frozen Antarctic shores. Adults will often walk with newborn chicks on their feet, snuggled under their bodies for warmth. And what about oh. Weddell seals? They also live off the coast of Antarctica and they are the southernmost mammal on earth. You'll often find groups of Weddell seals gathered around cracks and holes in the ice where they can hop in and go for a chilly swim. Mm. But how do they deal with the cold, right? Hmm. It's time for another little make. Um, yes. yes, they've got thick skin. Yeah, they've got feathers, right, some of them. But why don't they get cold when they're lying out on the frozen ice? Yeah. Well, what do we do when it's cold? What do we do to keep ourselves warm? Well, we... We will wrap ourselves up in big coats, won't we? Yeah. And the reason these coats work is because they're full of lots of fluffy fibres and those fibres trap in our body heat and they stop that, warm, that warmth from escaping and they don't let the cold air in. And we've got a video all about Antarctic clothing. Again, link down below if you want to watch it. But <sighs> you don't see seals and penguins putting on jackets, do you? No, they've uh, they've evolved another brilliant, brilliant way of staying warm. Uh -huh. uh, and we're going to show you how. So yes. for this, we need a few more props. Here All we right, go. Then. Last little demo of the day. So first things first, I've got here the, uh, let me just switch to it. This is the thermal imaging camera. So you can see that anything that is warm appears uh, bright white or yellow or red, and anything that's colder is purple or kind of blue. Yeah. So let's see your hand first, Mads. All right then, so I'm gonna show, this is my hand as it currently is. This is, oh, I've really touched cold things. Oh, you've Let touched cold things. Let me show you yours. Things. Here we go, here's my hand. There you are. 
That's my hand. Hello. So you can see that Greg's hand is mostly orange uh, and that shows us that it is warm. It is currently warm. Right. So Mine. what do we have? So, yeah. whoa, wow. look how dark that is. So in this bowl, I have put uh, ice water and this is going to represent the frozen coast and our frozen seas. And it's going to help us explain how animals that live there keep warm. So you see my hand. I'm just going to recalibrate. Hand. Okay. Put your hand next to it. We just re recalibrate. Oh, there you go. That's better, isn't it? Uh, so now you can... lost the calibration. Done. So now you... we think we're back. We're back. We're live. We're back. We're live again. Like, okay, well, there we go. Hello. Um, Sorry about think. that. So you, so you can see that my hand is much, much warmer than the frozen water. So what's going to happen to the colour of my hand if I dunk it in the frozen water? Should we see? Yeah, do it. Okay. Oh, it's freezing. Okay. Okay, take it out. Let's see what happens. <gasps> Whoa! Oh, that's amazing. That is so cool. So you can see that without the protection of a fluffy coat or gloves, my hand has instantly got really cold. So what do the animals do? Well, that is so amazing. So the animals like both seals and penguins are actually, they have another layer under their thick skin. And this is a thick layer of fat that we call blubber. 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 But to show you how blubber works as an insulator, meaning that it keeps that heat in, we have made ourselves a blubber glove. Do you want to show it on this cam? Sure, go for it. Tell here us what we've done. Here's a blubber glove. Right, so there are two bags here, right? There's an outside bag and then there's a bag on the inside. And between those two bags, we've put lard, Blech. which is like a fat, like It's animal butter. fat. It's animal fat. So it's to represent that blubber, right? You'd use it to cook. It's really good for roast potatoes, <laughs> yeah. uh, which we're probably going to be able to use this for actually later oh, on. Oh, definitely. And, and what Maddie's going to do this time is she's going to put her hand inside. Go on, you can go for that. All right. I'm going to use my other hand because my first one's really Put cold Put your hand now. inside. So this isn't going into the lard, right? This is no. going into the uh, protective bag inside. Can you seal but that now... up for me? Oh yeah, seal it up for you. All right then. So now let's see how my blubber glove helps to keep my hand insulated. So let's have ready. a look at your hand first. Whoa, look. So already it's not as uh, bright white and yellow as it was. No. So and that's it's... because it's, it's trapping that heat inside. Okay, I'm going to... We think we're back. Hi, we're back again. <laughs> Sorry about that. I told you we're going to have to fix some tech issues, aren't we? Yeah. After this, uh, I think we've lost this camera for now, Mads. But I'll get Have that. We? I'll get that fixed. I think we've also lost that camera. Don't worry. Carry on. Oh, carry right. on. But you can assume that uh, if I went and put my hand straight into that uh, that dark blue water, what will have happened is that actually the outside of the glove will have also have gone like a dark blue because the ice water will have clung to the side. However, my hands have stayed warm. Let's show you it. So I think this is because... Um... We've got so many cameras plugged in. All right, then. Here we so, go. Yeah, go for it. I'm putting it, I'm plunging it in the icy cold water. And you know what? I can all, I can barely feel that cold. That is unbelievable. Take that your hand so out. Different. Whoa, look at that. So as we expected, the blubber glove is cold, but if we look at my hand inside, it will still be warm. It works. Wow, that is so good. Oh my goodness, that shows it so well. That is wow. so, so good. Right, I'm unplugging that camera because that's the okay. one that's causing us issues. Go away, infrared camera. You caused but saying me, that, you caused did, me issues. But it did look awesome, though. How dare you? Um, but that did look amazing. It was exactly yeah. what we wanted to see. Oh. So there you go. We have gone for a bit of an adventure along the seashore. We've looked in rock pools and we also visited the frozen coasts to learn about blubber. And All right. so many people have been saying throughout this on the live chat, Greg, drop a fact bomb okay. every time we've dropped an amazing fact. For all of the facts that we've missed. Just for all the missed. facts that we've managed to squeeze into today's show. Um, we'd love to see it. If you have a go at making a rock pool, uh, designing some of your own rock pool wildlife. Yes. Yeah. If you have a go at the blubber glove. Blubber glove. Blubber, blubber <laughs> glove. Um, if you don't have large, you know, you could always just use cotton wool balls instead. Have a play around. Try different mm. insulators. You might find that some materials work better than others. So have an experiment. Uh, we did say at the beginning of the show we were going to show some of your photos that you've been sending us of the makes that you have been busy building and creating over the past week. So here they are. Here they are. Let's kick off with this one. Oh, so this is Sebastian. He's very proud of his bird feeder that he made using a recycled plastic bottle. And that's something that we made in Garden Week. And then let's move on to uh, various makes from Bodies Week. 
This is Katie, who's made her own digestive Dave and labelled it with all those different important parts. Frankie and Bella, they had loads of gory fun making their own blood and poo. Uh, moving on to Space Week. I love that you've gone back to all these weeks last week. Yeah. Space Week. This is April. Made this solar system with things she found around the house. Uh, she dressed up an astronaut and uh, her toy sheep as well is also <laughs> dressed up. <laughs> this is Elliot. Uh, he caught up on Space Week as well. And he also made his own Astro Ted. Love that. We got sent loads of uh, you lot having a go at Dinosaur Week activities. Mm-hmm. So here's Sean, who actually mixed Mini Makers Week and Dinosaurs Week oh. to make his own dinosaur-themed loopy lifter. Lovely. And his pterosaur has to rescue all the other dinosaur friends from the erupting volcano. That's cool. Love the story you put in there. This is Annabelle. She made her own Annabellosaurus, uh, and she even made her own coprolite and a dino world. Uh, this is from Project Earth. This is Florence using her solar oven to make chocolate orange ginger nuts. Uh, hello, tasty. That's delicious. My mouth is watering now. Um, and then finally, here's Neha. She made this beautiful bee hummer, but she actually used a ruler and plastic bottle tops instead of lollipop sticks and corks. Clever. That was what we were all about last week for Mini Makers. Absolutely. Finding our own twist. In fact, we yeah. are always. So remember, you can just send us, if you just get a grown up to send us your photos to this email address, hello, let's go live at gmail.com, then your photos could be in with a chance to make it into our show tomorrow. I cannot believe we made it through it. We've dropped out three times, we've had to change cameras and you've had yellow boxes around our face for the majority of it. I can't believe we managed to go live with those cameras, with no cameras at literally 5 five to 11 or wherever it was. So thank you so much for sticking with us. Yes. Uh, we love making this show out of our spare room. Um, <laughs> please do send us your makes. Um, we get every all the pictures that we use on the show from that email address. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also send us uh, stuff on social media. So that's it for Coasts. Tomorrow we're going to explore the shallows and take a closer look at coral reefs and kelp forests. Links to all of the uh, makes and also some resources that we've mentioned will be in the description box below. Hello if you're still with us. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and share the videos with any friends and family you think will enjoy them. Yeah, should we say uh, a quick hello? We've got Millie in Alston, Elsie in Alton, Freya in Reading, Cara in Poland, uh, Oliver and Elliot in Hampshire, wow. Porter in Wakefield, Saskia in... Uh, Hampton oh, we've still got loads thank you so much this thank has been you. a fun one <laughs> I guess we better say goodbye we should make sure as always you stay curious and subscribe to the channel if you haven't before we will see you tomorrow at 11am at 11 o'clock alright see you bye